So I'm going to talk about the cognitive and social benefits of uh, gratitude. And I want to start off with this uh, quote by uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer. He said that in an ordinary life, we hardly realize that we receive a great deal more than we give and that it is with gratitude that life becomes rich. So the question before the house this morning is, how does gratitude help us live well? We've seen some really, I think, cool information about how gratitude might help us live healthier lives. We have some information about how it might help us live um, more healthy emotional lives. But how does gratitude make, uh, help us live well? We found this approach to be, a pro, uh, to be helpful. Um, I believe that gratitude enhances well-being by amplifying the good in one's life. Just as the uh, sound going into a microphone can sometimes uh, increase the uh, uh, volume of sound, amplify the volume of sound, so gratitude amplifies the sound, so to speak, of the good in your life. Just as a magnifying glass, whoops, magnifies the uh, text that it's focused on, so gratitude too magnifies the, uh, what it is focused on, uh, magnifies the good. So we believe that gratitude enhances well-being by enhancing the good in one's life. Gratitude might amplify the good in your emotional experience. We've seen a lot of evidence for that. It amplifies the good in your ability to cope. So there's some evidence that gratitude even amplifies the good in bad events. And what I want to focus on this morning is that gratitude amplifies the good in cognitive processes and amplifies the good in your relationships as well. So, Let's start off with cognitive processes. How might gratitude train happy habits of thought or how gratitude trains your brain for happiness? We're gonna focus on a gratitude three blessings intervention study this morning uh, that I think demonstrates a little bit, although we're really still investigating this for the most part, uh, how gratitude actually might train your thinking in ways that enhance your f future well-being. Let's see. So here's the procedure we have. We did, of course, various pretest assessments and randomly assigned people to one of three groups, a semantic memory placebo control group, which you'll see did, in fact, produce a placebo effect, and a three blessings pride control treatment. Now, in every one of these treatments, people did something every day for just one week. We did it through email. In the Thrive Pride Three Blessings treatment, we basically asked them to recall three good things that had happened to them in the last 48 hours. And then we asked each them to write about how each of those things made them feel better than others or better than average. Now, you might say that's a pathological form of pride. You're right, it is. But we wanted to isolate gratitude because if I just ask people to say, how does this make you feel good about yourself, people are going to be processing those things in a grateful manner too. And I think you'll see it was probably successful in that. The third condition was a gratitude three blessings condition. So every day for a week, people recalled three good things that had happened in the last 48 hours. And then they simply wrote about how grateful, uh, how these things made them feel grateful. Then we did all of our subjects, and of course these were college students, uh, did a post-test assessment, and then we had a one-week follow-up and a five-weeks follow-up. So what did we find? Here's the impact. This is a composite uh, well-being measure. And what you see first of all is that indeed the placebo treatment worked. They got significantly happier. I don't know, maybe recalling how you went through the grocery store and how you got to campus that morning and what's on the front and back of a dollar bill really does improve, improve your happiness. Um, unfortunately for the Pride Three Blessings group, there was really no difference between that and the um, and the placebo condition, but as you can see, the gratitude uh, three blessings treatment did outperform the other two treatments. Now this is important for a couple of different reasons. I want to focus on one. Uh, it outperformed the placebo test, which was increasing well-being, not decreasing it, or, and so we know that it, it's doing something more than just non-specific treatment effects. Um, but the interesting thing, and it was a little bit surprising to us, but it shouldn't have been, is that the well-being of those in the gratitude treatment kept going up after the treatment period. This did not appear to be 
due to the fact that they were practicing it more than the others. That they, they weren't, really. Um, that wasn't related to outcome at all. So the question I want to ask is, why does well-being continue to increase after the great, grateful recounting treatment is over. We don't think this is just an anomaly of the results as some of you are aware Sullivan found something very similar with a similar three blessings treatment. Well we believe it's because grateful recounting trains cognitive habits that in turn enhance happiness. Grateful recounting may train you to first of all notice the good in your life. It may train you to make positive or more positive interpretations of good events, particularly grateful interpretations, and it might even train you to reflect more positively on your past. So grateful process, gratitude may amplify the good in your thinking processes, and now let's explore how gratitude amplifies the good in social processes. A lot of interesting research uh, here. I think Mike McCullough's theory is uh, really um, does um, demonstrate this quite well. First of all, Mike argued that uh, gratitude operates as a moral barometer, just as a barometer is an indication of the weather, so too the experience of gratitude is an indicator of your moral climate. When one feels grateful, one feels that others have been good to them. Secondly, they argued that gratitude is a moral motivator. Stated very simply, when people feel grateful, they feel like doing good to others, and you'll see more evidence for this uh, uh, in a bit. Very simply, gratitude motivates pro-social behaviors. And thirdly, McCullough and colleagues argued that gratitude is a moral reinforcer. When gratitude is expressed, it provides positive reinforcement to whom you're expressing it to, and they're more likely to do that good to you in the future, and research shows even to others um, that did not express gratitude to them. So gratitude very simply is good because it encourages moral behavior both in the benefactor and the beneficiary. So let's look at the social benefits of gratitude. Very simply, people like grateful people, and this is a benefit to your social world. Uh, this was a very simple study that I uh, did years ago where I simply asked people to list 10 people that they knew very well and then rate whether each person that they knew well was grateful, uh, ungrateful, or if they were neither to uh, put them in uh, the middle category. By the way, most people uh, put them into the grateful category. So uh, indeed, uh, great, it's not just that grateful people self-report being happier, and Bob found this finding too. Uh, grateful people, uh, also grateful acquaintances rate grateful people as being happier than ungrateful people. And also, more critically for our discussion right now, uh, grateful people were rated as much more likable than ungrateful people. And they also were rated as more likely to help them in the future. So this might be one important reason why uh, grateful people are liked more is they're more likely to help. So one major social benefit of uh, gratitude is that people like you when you're grateful. Uh, secondly, gratitude enhances our desire to affiliate with others. Now there's a lot of studies that have been demonstrate this. One of my favorite, because it's my, I think, favorite gratitude uh, experimental induction was done by uh, Dave DeSteno and Monica Bartlett. Uh, basically what you do as a subject is you, if you're in the gratitude condition, you come into the uh, into the experimental room and, and you take this long and boring uh, questionnaire and you get toward the end you're, and there's someone taking it right next to you who unbeknownst to you is actually a cohort of the uh, experimenter and they're talking positively with you and whatnot and you get almost to the end and suddenly the screen flickers and it goes blank. And the experimenter comes in and tries to fix it and whatnot and says, you know, this has happened before. I don't know if, I don't think we're going to be able to fix this. I'm going to get a tech, but you're probably going to have to start this all over again. And so they leave the room, and then the person who's next to you, who you just think is a fellow student like you, starts monkeying around with it and indeed just plugs the monitor in and, oh, look at this, you've not lost anything. Of course, you're extremely grateful at that point in the control. In the control condition, they simply converse with the 
person, then the computer doesn't go haywire and whatnot. So basically in this study, after this was over, they just asked people, we want you to come back to the experiment next week. Would you prefer working with a partner or working with a loan? And those in the gratitude condition showed a very strong preference for working with a partner, whereas those who um, did not um, uh, were in the control condition actually preferred to work for, uh, alone. So one of the things we see about the social benefits of gratitude is it enhances our desire to affiliate with others. Gratitude also enhances our communal orientation toward others. And Giacomo Bono and Jeff Froze research shows um, a lot of this. And that might be primarily because gratitude enhances our tendency to include others. Again, Giacomo's research has found this. There's also actually some experimental studies have found this too. Uh, it encourages to include others even when it is costly to ourselves. So gratitude is an inclusive emotion. And fifth, gratitude enhances pro-social behavior. Again, lots of studies that show this, but I, again, I like this, uh, the, the uh, uh, Dave DeSteno manipulation here. So again, the same uh, you know, computer malfunction kind of thing. And what you can see, and basically in, in this case, what happens is either the benefactor, the person who fixed your computer, or in the control conditions, the, just the person who you conversed with, um, or a stranger asks you to do a long questionnaire, not for extra credit, not for more, any more money, just out of the goodness of your heart, and they just basically saw how long they spent on the questionnaire. As you can see in the gratitude condition, um, uh, in the benefactor condition, uh, the grateful people in the grateful condition spent a lot more time on the questionnaire than did those in the neutral condition. Similarly, although uh, a little bit less, in the stranger condition, you found also that they spent more time on the questionnaire, which that's interesting. It's not even the benefactor. It's just some stranger asks you you're, if you're feeling grateful, you're more likely to be pro-social toward them. So we've seen a lot of social benefits of gratitude. People like grateful people. Gratitude enhances our desire to affiliate with others. Gratitude enhances our communal orientation with others. It enhances our tendency to include others. It enhances pro-social behavior. And finally, as Sarah Algo and Amy uh, Gordon's gonna talk about later, it enhances our relationships. Now, I'm not gonna steal all their thunder except for uh, Sarah's very helpful theory about how gratitude enhances our relationships. She argues that gratitude helps us find new relationships. Gratitude helps us remind us of relationships that are important to our well-being. And finally, gratitude helps us bind relationships that are important to helping us living well. So gratitude helps us find, remind, and bind in our relationships. And I think this is a very helpful um, theory for uh, uh, understanding how gratitude it provides social benefits. So, um, as I conclude, um, why is gratitude so great? Well, this morning I've argued that gratitude amplifies the good in cognitive processes and it amplifies the good in social processes as well. How does gratitude enhance your well-being? This is the big question in my lab, and one time we were discussing this, and I was pontificating and going on and on about cognitive bias modification and information processes of grateful schemas and, um, and how you know, gratitude might train um, benign interpretations and uh, better encoding and intention biases, and that, et cetera. And finally, I let my students have a word, and I said, uh, well, what do you think? How does gratitude enhance well-being? And one of my students who had migrated to the Northwest from, uh, from the South said in his thick South Louisiana drawl, how does it enhance well-being? Well, I think it just makes you nicer. <laughs> so maybe <clears throat> when all is said and done, gratitude just makes you nicer. So I think I'll end this talk by being a little nicer by saying thanks. Uh, if you want more information about this, please email me. If you, I didn't look once at the minutes. If you really, oh, oh good, okay. If you really want to know more about it, of course you can buy my book, but there's some research that says that showing my book indicates inauthentic gratitude and you'll actually be less likely to buy my book, so I'll, I'll take it off there. Okay, thank you. <laughs>